Here we have some chord voicings of Johnny Smith's arrangement of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I'll be playing them on a jazz guitar, aria jazz box, neck pickup, and I'm going to play it finger style just to arpeggiate the chords a little bit, but you could strum this with a pick as well. Okay, you saw that by using my fingers, I was able to arpeggiate them a little bit. If you played it with a pick, you'd be going... And so on. Let's look at some of these chords. <clears throat> the first one, straightforward, E flat. The next chord is an A minor 7 flat 5. You can play that with your thumb. It's a C minor 6 with the A in the bass. You could play it with... You know, fourth finger double stop there. I kind of like that finger because then if you're going to go to this D7 flat 9, do you see how I have two pivot fingers, the first and second fingers? Or another way would be playing it with the second, third, first fingers. That way I have the high A available if I need it for melody or comping. D7 flat 9, a lot of different fingerings there, and I encourage you to practice every fingering you can come up with, even these crossed fingerings. Then you go to a G minor 9. Now, some people aren't comfortable with this fourth finger hyperextension bar. I see a lot of people that'll pull their hand down like this because they're not used to hyperextending that. Well, the reason that that's going to cause a problem is it pulls these other fingers down. You're going to be muffling the fourth string. You'll miss your flat three. And frequently, the problem lies in how the student puts the hand on the neck. If your thumb's way in the back, that might work. But you'll find that sometimes by cradling the neck, and by that I mean the underside of the index finger knuckle and the ball of the thumb right here, you cradle the neck, and you're coming in, and you notice how your knuckles are a little bit diagonal from the edge of the fingerboard. Now that could be played with the second, third, and first fingers. But anyway, you have that G minor 9. Then the next one is an F minor 11. Now I'm playing a, a double stop finger. You see I have my little finger playing the second and third fingers, and you see a grand bar in place because that actually facilitates my posture on that. You could play it with a double stop of the third finger. You can even do this. So explore all these fingers. I mean, there have been times when I played it like that. See how I'm not using a bar. I've got first and second fingers here. But anyway, so you have that F minor 11, then your E9. That could have been played like this, but obviously it makes sense to play this. Then you go to your E13, E flat 13 rather and the straight A flat. Now you might want to add a 9 in there, spice it up a little bit. Then you have your A minor 7 flat 5 again to the D7 flat 9. You can always add a sharp 9 there. G minor 7. A lot of fingerings for that. I mean, you know, sky's the limit. You can do all kinds of things down there. C7 flat 9 sharp 11. Okay, then we're moving to the F minor 7. You have to be careful there because you're down so low in register, it can get muddy with this fifth. So you might choose to not play the fifth, the C note right there. Then you go up. I prefer, because I come from a classical background, a lot of training there, uh, I prefer to keep my thumb in the back and I'll use a crossbar for something like this instead of playing with my thumb. It's just personal preference. So the crossbars enable me to capture the one, the sharp 11, or the flat five. Okay, then my E flat 6 9. A lot of fingerings available there. You can, sky's the limit. Okay. Now, on the next move, instead of this to me is really not efficient. If you play C7 flat 5 like that, that's how you'd see it in the chord book, and then you'd go to here. Well, you're not sustaining any voices. I would rather use a crossbow and just maybe move that one voice like a pianist, or maybe just. Here, I've got more sustain. I'm always after that, at least have the ability to do it if I choose. Then my B minor 7 flat 5, B flat 7 sus 4, and you know, I probably wouldn't put that fifth string in there. Again, trying to keep the same number of voices in the chords. So that'll give you a little bit of insight, but you have a lot of tension. For example, when you have that C7 flat 9 sharp 11, you got that B flat 7 flat 5 flat 9. A lot of tension chords. Those are always five chords resolving back to a one of some sort, be it major or minor. 